Hello. Welcome back, Myra. Okay, so we're at time. Um, so uh, first off, uh, MTTP. So uh, I've just got 18 hours of blockers. Uh, is that uh, is that accurate, Henry, Robert? Like there were just the ones from early in the week. Was that all we experienced last week? Um, for blockers, I actually need to check what we did last week. Um, I think I updated the, at the beginning, beginning of the week, but um, I think the rest of the week, we didn't have any blockers as far as I remember. Yeah, that should be correct. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> nice. That's good news. Um, cool. Um, and how is how was release management last week? So MTTP is reasonably high. Like, was that a were we? Do we have abnormal stuff going on last week? I think at the beginning of the week there were certain issues holding up um, deployments. I think we had issues with um, the security release and and um, then also with um, merging back changes. Right? I think um, we had merge conflicts. Yeah, but correct. I need to look back what else was there. Cool. And okay. there was this one with some database migration going wrong, right? Also, I think. Okay, okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, there was a day a after the security release where I was basically spending all day with a conflict in the merge chain. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. So we don't, I don't know if we've got those in the block, but okay. Because uh, I was going to say, like, let's keep an eye on MTTP. Um, and see, um, I'm hoping it uh, it comes down following PCL, but let's keep an eye on uh, on the target um, and branches and things like that. I just checked, I think I updated the Excel sheet with um, deployment blockers last week. And I think we had this prefect to be in staging being down, being a, a blocker for a while, from security master and also security merge reflects. And that was a lot of hours blocking us at the beginning, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but, okay. but uh, for the rest of the weeks, everything went fine. Cool. Okay, great. Well, let's hopefully uh, we have a good week. Um, so I've put a few announcements in. I will leave these as read only uh, unless anyone wants to call out anything around those. Awesome. Okay, so discussions. So um, we're quite likely to start hiring quite soon um, for additional team members, um, which is good. One thing I'm curious about, um, whether anyone has strong opinions on, should we be, um, like, I'm not quite sure where the, how this kind of will tie in through Q, uh, sorry, like Q1 and sort of through next year. So it's not like there's necessarily like, we will get just this number of people or this set of skills, but do people have strong opinions on what skill sets or time zones we should add, like for the first people coming in, so we can get prioritized? Uh, my first question, question would be Is this more looking for um, back end developers or more looking for SIEs? Or... That's the question exactly for you. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you think based on what we're trying to achieve? Like, would it be helpful? What do people think? Like, do we, would it be helpful for our first hire to be uh, back end or SRE? Oh. I think this is depending on a lot of things, right? I mean, right now I would say having one more SIE would be great. But on the other hand, we are very busy with uh, uh, web migration. Like the migrations to Kubernetes are a big task for us. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when this is done, how much um, SIE week will be in our team or will be spread over to the rest of uh, infrastructure, right? If we don't do um, big migrations anymore. I wouldn't so... worry too much about that. This is an entirely temporary team. Uh, and once we complete our remit, <laughs> right? But it's not a temporary team, right? Like it is officially a temporary team, but uh, we will end our goal when everything we do is built into the GitLab product and any developer can deploy, right? That's our, our end state. So we are temporary, um, but I wouldn't worry about, yeah, I wouldn't worry about the state coming too soon. Same, exactly same with the migration, right? We still have pages 
Uh, we still have Prefect, we still have Gitterly and Redis and HA Proxy are kind of known at the moment. So like, you know, we, we have we have more than a year's worth of work to do. So he's saying probably an SRE would be a good place to start. To yeah, with, uh, SRE like with a lot of Kubernetes knowledge. That would be, I think, a good thing. Maybe also an APEC, right? Because we only have one person in APEC right now. Yeah, that's true. Oh. 10 years of Kubernetes experience. 20, I was thinking. Like, we want someone really experienced here. <laughs> Oh, okay, great. Um, so we'll see how these things uh, start up related to hiring. Um, definitely want to make sure, well, two things I'm going to need you to be involved uh, so that we can actually run interview processes. But also I do want you to, as many of you to be involved as possible because these will be our teammates. Um, I want you to be able to have an opinion on um, you know, like, are they going to fit in with the team? Is it someone you'd be um, happy to work with? Do you think you'll learn stuff from them? So curious to know, first off, like, is it just Henry who has done training and led an interview or any of the other rest of you at that stage? No? Okay. Um, and I know some of you don't want to interview. Um, it may be that, um, it may be that we will need you to. Uh, but I'm happy to work with you all individually on those things. So I'll, I'll do a follow-up interview note for all of you one-to-one -one, and we can talk about that stuff. Um, but we want to kind of streamline our process so that candidates don't have loads of interviews, but they just get the ones that matter, but that we can, uh, it's the first time we're going to be hiring externally actually into the team, which is going to be interesting. Um, not to say actually they'll definitely be external. Like once we get the process up, I'm hoping we'll get some internal applicants as well right so it, it could be people uh we know but still they'll go through the process um so we can work these things out um cool okay i'll follow up with you one-to-one -one on these things so thank you very much how many people do we want to hire is it for this Super good quarter? i don't actually know um i believe so i know that we were kind of penciled down for q4 to have three um, and some of those are hopefully coming forwards based off the PCL and all the work we have. But what I actually don't know is whether all three move forwards or whether it maybe is one in Q3 and a couple in Q4 or, or how it fits together. So I'm not, I'm not super sure. Uh, I don't think anything's approved just yet. Um, but just so that when, when it happens, when it opens, it, it will be sort of like, let's begin. So I just want to make sure that we... Um, know what we're going to do we have our process and we know what like exercises we're going to ask people to go through and actually if only henry is trained as well um if anyone else does get trained up we'll need to go through the training process and there's a little bit of work there to go through like shadowing and and things like that as well super um so uh q3 okrs so Q3 is all about hardening okay, uh, hardening off rollbacks, right? So this is a uh, super handy OKR for us at this quarter because we've got lots of little things that have been kind of going along, which all tie nicely into this. So the big pieces of this OKR are um, stateless uh, migration to get pages and web fully migrated. And it is also to kind of wrap up on the rollbacks epic that we started already. But we have other stuff which is super related, which is about metrics and it's about um, uh, coordinated uh, pipelines and Kate's workload tooling and all of those things tie in quite nicely to rollback. So we'll definitely be pulling stuff in from other epics as we go through this quarter as well. But one thing that's really interesting about rollbacks and one of the reasons why kind of hardening rollbacks is going to be a really um, valuable thing for us to do is I think within this team, we generally feel quite confident with rollbacks. Like our tests have gone super well, like everyone's kind of, we've got great run book. But at the moment, uh, from a compliance point of view, rollbacks are an amber risk. So much more risky from their point of view than a deployment. And that's entirely down to the fact that we don't do very many. So they're new to us, it's a bit of an unknown. 
So what we want to do for this quarter is basically move that. So if one of the big things is if we can get a regular rollback practice in place and compliance can see that, that will reduce the risk from their point of view around compliance. So it was already something we've talked about. It was already on this epic. So it seems like a really great place to start out to just try and put a bit more process around some of the stuff we've done already. Um, so with two bits to this, uh, this issue. One is staging. So we've talked about this. We've had various kind of ideas and different things. We haven't really got like a firm process in place. So what do people feel would be a great way for us to make sure like it doesn't matter like who is the, ro the, the release manager, you know, we actually have a solid process so that every week staging rolls back at least once. I feel like staging fails enough where if we went the default route of if something failed in staging, just roll back immediately. Mm. I feel like that happens enough where we should be able to test that naturally. One thing I'm unclear on is when things fail in staging, whether um, how much people need staging to be in that stay in that state for them to investigate. Does anyone have any kind of recent incident thoughts on that? I think potentially a QA failure would be something they would investigate while it's still running that version. Mm. Yeah, the last hour we had was because the prefect DB was down. That mm. wouldn't be possible to roll back because we had infrastructure failure failure in this case. So it depends on which kind of failure we see, but I think most of them are QA failures, right? So those yeah. okay. maybe investigation, but but you see the, those in locks anyway and rolling back should be okay, I guess. So how about if we've kind of just added a little bit on there so that it's a, um, it's a, like a, I guess a staging failure that's requiring a revert MR. And at the point where someone kind of goes off to prepare that revert, you could just roll back staging at that point. I think that makes sense. I'm just wondering if it's suitably common enough to be meaningful. Mm. I feel like that's pretty rare, but maybe that's selective memory. <laughs> I wonder if we shouldn't rely on failures. I know that the staging fails a lot, but at some point I will hope that the staging is kind of stable and doesn't fail as often. Uh, so probably, I don't know. Um, I was considering having some sort of alert in the F upcoming release channel or the delivery channel, basically saying that, oh, okay, this package is rollbackable or whatever. And you roll, do you want to roll back just because of the sake of it? And that's it. Some some sort of message saying that we are allowed because the package is, doesn't have migrations or there is no incident around. And rolling back staging doesn't take us a lot. It's like 20 minutes or something. Mm. Would not be a great time, I don't know, at, at night, right? Uh, in APEC business times to do something like that because then not much is happening anyway. We don't do um, production deploys at this time normally. Okay, now starting with uh, green maybe, but um, to just pick this time and, and I don't know, once or twice per month to just do it at that time. I kind of like people using it. Like it sounds a bit harsh, like sounds a bit mean, but like I, one thing I think we'll, I think is, I mean, yeah, I guess teams are testing on it, but um, it's helpful to have some traffic. Like it would be great to kind of see, kind of to start seeing any of the odd stuff, I guess, on staging. Um, but I mean, certainly, I guess we're not probably not all that far away from automating a rollback and then APAC would be a super good place to have that. Um, so, um, yeah, I kind of like your idea, Myra, like it's, uh, that's a, I guess it's because it also it feels kind of iterative, right? Like we're going to need to have that for production deployments at some point as well, like something similar, which is like flagging this thing is suitable for rollback um, to, to make that easy. 
Yeah, we could use the same idea for production because um, I was reading your comment about stating a period in which we are going to schedule a rollback, but that cannot work because of incidents or PCLs or whatever. So perhaps we can have like a flagging thing on the package saying that, okay, this package can be rolled back and we can apply it in production or in staging. And that will give us, I guess, a larger time frame to test mm. things. And it will be up to the release manager to do that, of course, at least for production. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how about, so for staging and how about we say we will, first task we'll do is implement a, like um, a visible thing somewhere on deployments that actually flag like um i guess is it, uh, we have to, we'll have to do it on like the actual staging right because i guess staging is a bit different uh but we have something which shows like state that the um i mean like what do i, I don't mean it's different i mean no, it's not different. Ignore me. So we'll have something, we'll have a flag uh, where we uh, we indicate that this package is suitable for rollback. And then once we've got that in place, we can put something like a process in place where release managers like once a week, um, like I'm wondering if we just add some stuff into the release issue, right? And so you could have like, uh, like once a week or something as a box, which just says like a staging rollback has completed and you could just, um, you could just mark it off in there. And then once we've got that in place, we've got staging running super easy. We can work out how to make production a bit more of a straightforward process. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Nice. Okay, great. Uh, let me see. I see we've already got an issue for that. If not, um, if, if we haven't got it already, then um, Myra, I'll. Uh, collaborate with you we can get what your vision is out of your head into an issue um kind of related to the production one so we um had a um in fact we still have a change issue you may have just closed again i'll reopen it so release managers it would be super great if we could try and get the production rollback um like have another shot this week uh see what else is scheduled and actually see if there's a um a day this week we could have another go at doing that as a general kind of rule of thumb it looks like the 7 um 07 utc package generally is pretty good for rolling back doesn't often have a great deal in it um so certainly when myra and i were kind of trying to do it that was the most hopeful looking package each day and then generally if you can deploy it to production roll it back. If you're lucky, the um, 11 UTC one is quite ready for production quite close after. So you're not kind of waited for, you don't get delayed by too much stuff. But I think if we can't do it this week, we'll need to push after the release again. Yeah, I think you should give it a try. Should work, I think. Um... So we still have a patch release pending right now, but I think that's not very urgent. So um, we can just, I don't know. I have to look into how we did it last time from, from like, like did we create a change request for that? I guess, right? For the, yeah, there is one, uh, there's already one open. Let me find it for you. Oh, nice. Uh, I, I will dig out the one that, so there is, a, there is one that we just moved. We got rescheduled because of the PCL. So we just need to schedule um on a day that that works for you basically okay then i will pick that up and choose a date super for this sounds, week sounds good um and i'll have a chat with you as well henry and just talk through so i think it'll be good for us to get a sort of documented process of how we end up with a package ready to go for testing so i'll have a chat with you and there's a couple of options we can use to to set that up on that package yeah i remember slightly yeah super Awesome, great. But yeah, it'd be super good to get that uh, um, in if we can. So, great. Nice. Nice. Thanks for that. Um, cool. Uh, let me see. Sorry. What's the word? Uh, Cool. Okay. Super. Thank you very much. Um, Myra, over to you. 
Yep. Um, so you probably know our forever problem about having a large post migration that is going to take 30 or 40 minutes to be executed. And then so far we are notified about it. And then we are kind of bummed because uh, well, the larger the post deploy, the migration, the larger the deployment duration, and that makes our MTTP sad. So uh, the database team uh, actually created an async index creation. I think it got deployed last week, and I don't know if you heard about it, uh, but I, I think it is quite cool. So basically, you just schedule a migration uh, that creates the index, but the index is not created in that point. It is kind of scheduled to be created during the weekend, along the same time our as our rate index task. Um, and it has been being used for C creating indexes for CIE builds and for another large table. So I think it is quite cool. So something just to be aware of. Nice. Thanks for that, Myra. Yeah, definitely. So um, last week we talked a little bit about this, but there are lots of um, migrations coming over the next um, month, six weeks, maybe. Um, and yeah, so this is super great example. Like they're going to attempt to do as much of this over the weekends um, to avoid blocking things, but there will certainly be some disruption as well. So we'll see how it goes. We need like a magic alternative to post deployment migrations. So also, if you could all just think about something that's like a post deployment migration, but not a post deployment migration, that would be uh, helpful. Awesome. Uh, so I have a question about this. Yes. Let's say a PCL gets rolled into place, but we've already merged something, say Monday, that would create a massive index, but the PCL extends over the weekend. What prevents that index from being created? So as far as I know, the task that reveals the indexes is only scheduled during the weekend. So basically all the merge requests or the migrations are going, are going to be queued and wait for the other weekend to be created. It is kind of manual right now, but it won't be created like in the Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. Nice, good question. Are there any other discussion items for today?